Hello, my name is Kang Lee. I'm the owner of Twin City Guppies. We founded the store in 2016, but I've been keeping fish for pretty much all my life. Welcome to my store. On a day like this where it's super cold out, right now it's roughly about like one degrees outside because of the cold, traffic is a little slower. We open up and we have more time to tidy stuff up at the store because it's so cold outside. I used to work at the mall here for quite a while. Like as a teenager, I worked in this mall. Then I worked security for this mall for quite a few years. And then I opened up the shop in the mall. So I've been in the mall for a long time, apparently. <laughs> so I was uh, born and raised in Minnesota here. We lived in, on Eastside St. Paul and it's a big, huge monk community over there. So guppies captures my fascination just because they're kind of a fish that you can be like beginner level or you can take it super far with genetics and kind of wanted to create your own um, line if you really wanted to. Can you perfect that color or that finish or that pattern? Yay, good job, E5, you got Mom. it. Today okay. is February. Hi, my name is Sai, and I am Kang Lee's wife. I'm also the brains behind the operation. You know, all of this started with um, when his brother had passed, his older brother who was a year older than him had passed away. You know, obviously when you lose a loved one, it kind of puts you in a dark place. Shortly after the passing of his brother, he also found out that he had um, this genetic heart disorder and so he was in the process of becoming a law enforcement police officer and he sort of lost that career path. It was a dark place, a dark time for him and we had decided that you know there needed to be some change to kind of help him be present again and stay connected with his family and fish keeping was something that Kang and his brother did all the time together um, for as long as I could remember. You know, they were best friends. They had phases of different kinds of fish that they would be into. So it sort of helped him surpass and overcome these, this depression mode that he was sort of in. Um, it became like therapy for him. And then that love for fish just boomed into a business because it was his passion and it was easy for him to um, make it grow into something more than just a hobby. Don't like them. There's, no, there's none of the, it looks all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, nope, I don't like it or yep, I like it. I was a teacher for 15 years. That was my passion and it still is my passion. When we first decided to open up a store, um, I definitely was overwhelmed. I was pregnant at the time. I had four kiddos already. I also had um, my fourth kiddo who was also diagnosed with being on the autism spectrum, so special needs, and we're in the process of trying to figure out all of her therapy sessions and how we're going to help her be successful. And I had just, you know, left my job. You know, we we're trying to figure out how are we going to make this work. Kang had suggested that we could you know, open something up at the mall. And I wasn't on board at first, but you know, after more um, discussions, we both decided that, you know, that really was the only way for us to be able to keep Twin Cities Guppies going and be able to kind of move forward with our family um, in regards to getting a bigger house, having um, more of the things that we need for our big family that's growing. Um, usually on a weekend like this, when it gets busy like this, my oldest daughter helps us out. So we'll bag the fish and she's pretty good at the register. So she helps ring up the fish, make sure they get the receipts and all that stuff. And we continue to bag fish while she rings up for us. So it's super helpful. I'm at the store every day of the week from open to close most of the times, right? My brother helps out from time to time. For the most part, I have to be here from open to close Sunday through Saturday, right? And that's probably the most difficult part is be spending the time here to make sure that the business is running properly and then not having to spend time that I would like to with 
my kids, right? That would probably be the most difficult thing um, about having a retail store for me. Throughout the video, you might hear a lot of like kids in the background and a lot of like kitty music and stuff like that. With Amazon kind of taking over with the whole retail thing, the mall has kind of shifted from like big corporations to like more mom and pop stuff. So you get a lot of like entertainment stuff. The animal rides right outside of our store where the kids ride the animal rides back and forth. So you kind of have to play Frogger sometimes when you're going out. Jumping trampolines, there's a like a feeding and petting zoo in the mall. It's kind of geared towards more like family, kitty family hangout stuff now. So that's probably why you hear a lot of kids and you'll see a lot of kids and stuff like that. Okay, so we started Twin Cities Guppies. Kang started it as a hobby. We bred some guppies in our basement and we're kind of selling that way. And then we started getting more inquiry about you know, people wanting to buy guppies from us. When things started to boom was kind of when we met Corey. And I didn't even really realize like how big this all could get. Um, Why don't we start off with the guppies, right? Because that's what we all started, how the business started off with. So right at first here, we have the albino full reds, right? They have the delta tails with um, the body being full red and the females having the the albino white body and a red tail. All right, these really yeah. pop from like yeah. the whole shop. You can see these from yeah. The, the, these guys um, definitely pops in a planted tank or a dark background like this. You'll see them across from the room. It draws everybody's attention to this tank because they're the 24 karat gold guppies, right? They're super gold. They're, they're you can't even say like yellow, right? Yeah, like, they're gold. Um, like they're that dark. And the gold females colors. are really big yeah, too. Yeah, the females have, they're, they're big and they got that dark gold color as well as the males. So down here we have the blue Moscow's, the typical okay, so blue Moscow's. these are juveniles. Yeah, these so are these are juveniles and these guys are definitely more like breeders age, right? Would the these be color. cheaper? We don't really sell those because we can't guarantee like as juveniles like that and they're kind of darker in color. And if I sold it to you and it doesn't turn blue then you're gonna be upset at me yeah, right yeah. so I would be <laughs> <laughs> so we won't sell them because of that and then here we have the the green dragons there's a couple of coloration of the green dragons there's the red that's really popular underneath that tank is the blue dragons another variant of the dragon so very similar um, just slightly color variation I love their dorsal yeah wow the females the females too. really yeah wow. the females really pop I bet you Corey's gonna take some of these home when he comes. <laughs> Which one's more popular between the um, two? Between the two, I would say the, the blue is more popular just because with the green, um, you get a little bit uh, of the green, but with the blue, it's just it just pops so much. Yeah, that, yeah that, I can see that that's blue, but I can't really yeah, see with, that that's with, green. With the green, you, with the green, it's kind of like, it's almost like, um, like the light kind of plays an effect on it. So depending on what kind of light and how what angle you're looking at them and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Then then you'll see some green, but with the blues, they're always blue. These are These awesome. are the albino red koi's. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier and I have the uh, same line, but uh, slightly variants where there's a cobra in the middle, right? The cobra the pattern. Skin? Yeah, the snake skin. The, yeah. the, the snake skin pattern. We'll show more, you that in a little bit. Yeah, the snake skin pattern is more, they've bred it out so that the snake skin pattern is more. Yeah, that's in a secret room. Parent. And then these guys are the tiger half moons. They kind of look like the best Mosaic. guppies in the world. A <laughs> little bit. A little they bit. They got they got um they got uh, more yellow in them. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see the yellow. Yeah, for sure. And then these guys here are the metal black lace. Okay, so. I absolutely love these ones. I took so many photos of them, and then you love them. Yeah, they don't sell well. They don't. They don't. Uh, they don't sell as well for us because I honestly feel like it's one of those wow factors of like seeing it in person, right? Yeah. Like they look super nice, um, but in person, it, it, it's when you see them in person, it really gives you that wow factor. Well, after this video, maybe you sell a little bit more. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, right? And then. These are um, the albino blue tails, right? One of my favorites. Somebody once said they, they have that 
that Cinderella blue. That's why I told a customer yesterday right? he bought some. And underneath the light, they have that Cinderella blue color and really magical, I, I want to say, underneath yeah, the light. Yeah, very fairy tale looking. Yeah. Um, and then these are the tiger cobras. It's only females in here, right? Oh yeah, unfortunately we sold all the males and there's only four females left. How but did that even happen? In our store, we will sell however you want it if we have, if we have it, right? Okay. So um, sometimes we get customers that come in and they're like, I don't want any babies. I just want all oh, male tank, come on, guys. right? So, so then they're like, can I just buy two males or three males or um, stuff like that. But we that. can't blame them because at one time you really wanted an all male tank. Yeah. That yeah. Really like, fabulous. Right. That's the, well, the display tank yeah. is an all male tank, right? I yeah. still, I still love an all male tank. I don't blame them for wanting an all male tank, but. Yeah, but is there yeah. a reason why the females all just lay on the bottom over there? Um, I don't, ever since the, all the males left, they i think they just kind of oh. they're kind of spooked so they're they kind of lonely yeah they kind of just they kind of just they stick together all the time and they yeah. and they're in, in that corner or in this corner us chicas need to stick together <laughs> these guys are the tuxedo kois and these guys their colors on them like we love these guys these guys they, they really pop they have that bright orange and that platinum metallic look to them all of them are really fantastic looking right yep and there's this ribbon guy. Yeah, so explain the ribbon. So, um, they, well, obviously they have some form of ribbon uh, gene in them, but it's not very strong in that genetic, in, in this genetic line. So every once in a while, you will get the ribbon line, right? Um, but we were talking to a customer uh, who wanted to buy ribbons, and that fish would be technically just a show fish, right? Uh, once the ribbon gets that long, typically they can't breed anymore. So Why is that? Um, just because the, when the, uh, the ribbon gets too long, the gonoponium gets too long, the tube doesn't fully go that long with the, the gonoponium. So then he can't mate because of that, right? So technically when you're breeding ribbons, you want to have like the female to be the ribbon but then the males to be like the normal trait where they don't have carry the ribbon and that way that they can they can breed with ribbon females okay. and then you just selectively take the ones that don't have the ribbons so it's literally all for show yes yes famous red dragons those were the ones that um Corey called the best guppies in the world now he was Elephant attracted ear. to them because the females look fantastic. Yeah, so the females have a, like really, really great coloration, and you'll see like they also have that greenish color in their on their body, and their tail is like almost just as pretty as the males. Almost, it is. Yeah, than yeah. The males. I mean, the <laughs> coloration and pattern wise, it's like it's equally just as impressive. Yeah. It is hard to run a business with five kids just because you know you have the storefront and you want to stay professional and make sure that things are going smoothly out here but then you also have to tend to your kids and so you know we have homework we have to take care of dinner um, I'm definitely running in and out all day long dropping kids off at school and picking kids up from school and just trying to be the best mom that I can be and give my kids the attention and love that they deserve as well as trying to also uh, give my time and energy into the store. All right, where are we at? All right, so this is our um, storage unit slash quarantine room slash family classroom for my daughter. My youngest daughter is autistic so she has to have more structure around her so create a little room for our daughter so that she can continue to have that whole feel of she's at school and she has a schedule and what she has yeah, to do that's so awesome that's the little corner over there for her first like where where is this in the mall like we're still okay. in the mall so right? we're, yeah we're still in the mall um, we're just a couple units down so if you were on the outside looking in um, it's walled up so there's no doors I always wonder store. what happens behind those right those. <laughs> but but this is another uh, unit just a couple units down from us uh, inside the mall so we're still in the mall so these are kind of quarantine or uh, these are just extra tanks but these two here were my first two um, Daphnia cultures a lot of people wanted Daphnia so then I started selling like starter kits to my customers stuff like that and then found out like okay a 10 gallon tank for Daphnia isn't gonna be enough so then I did a second one and then that still wasn't enough and that's when that's why the 55 green tank came 
came to life. The one guppy strand that, that I'm kind of playing with myself, um, it's a albino koi. It has the snakeskin pattern in the middle of the white body. So I've been working with it, I've been kind of playing with it. Hopefully I can get it to that, that 85, 90 percentile of breeding true. I love guppies and that's my, my project that I have to keep for myself as a hobbyist instead of just being all retail to, to keep me still hobby happy, I guess. Well, it's never my fault. No. It's always his fault. That's a true statement. <laughs> and it always has to do with like the automated water system. Um, I think the worst disaster for me was when we had our fry room in our basement. The automated water system was hooked up and for some reason, you know, we always have it on a timer. And so for some reason, wasn't my fault it, was the, timer. the timer didn't like go off, like it didn't turn off. You know, when we had shut down the, the fish rooms downstairs for the night and went to bed and then we woke up the next morning to come do our walk through and feed. All of my babies, my fry, they were like floating, they were all dead because the water had been running all night. I was really upset, it was really emotional. Um, it was really sad. It was kind of a shock <laughs> to wake up to that. That was, that was the biggest disaster, I think, for me. Yeah, my, my biggest disaster would be when we had the store and we just had uh, import shipment come in. <laughs> and yep, it was after the store had closed and I went over to the quarantine room and I turned on the water because this there was no automated timer on this one. It, it's a manual on and off. And I turned it on, me and my brother got into a conversation and it was kind of a, a deep conversation. So we kind of were talking about it and then we kind of just left. And then when we came back the next morning, when I came back the next morning I opened the door all the fish in the quarantine section were dead. The entire import uh, shipment that came in, um, thousands of dollars, just dead because I forgot to turn off the water. I was not happy. No, she wasn't happy with <laughs> me. I was like, what are you gonna do? I just killed all our fish, like all the fish came in and now they're dead because of me. Oh yeah, that was heartbreaking. <laughs> All right, so end of the day, close out the register, cover the display tanks again, because like I said, we're in a mall, so the outside hall lights never turn off. So we have to cover it, otherwise it's 24 hour lights all the time. Mm -hmm. We still have to count cash. <laughs> <laughs> he has his jobs and I have my job so that we're not stepping on each other's toes, but we all know really who the boss is. And so we just kind of let them think they're the boss. That's my tip. Okay, <laughs> that works. <laughs> Mine would be um, to remember to include the other person um, <laughs> when opening a store together. I always keep each other included and in the know of what's going on within the business because you guys are in the business together. So make sure you keep each other informed. Good answer, good answer. Yeah. So we just want to say thank you to everybody who's um, support us, uh, supported us throughout the years. Because of you guys, um, all this is possible. So we want to say thank you for that. And I want to say thank you to my wife, who's always been there for me, uh, the backbone of the fam uh, family and the business. So um, without her, <laughs> none of this is possible. And thank you for putting up with me. Love you. I've always worked and you know I've always been a teacher at heart and I love being a teacher but I, you know something else that I always loved and wanted to do was be a stay-at-home mom and being able to have this has allowed me to spend more time with my kids and be more flexible um, in being able to do that. So thank you. Was that really corny? <laughs> she told him that I always include you in everything and <laughs> uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs>